Because of the many divisions and evil things happening across our country right now, many Christians have lost hope in trying to reach people for Christ. But all the while, God is on the move and salvations are happening in large numbers. Here to talk more about the repentance and the revival at hand, let's welcome our friend, pastor of Open Door Church, Troy Brewer. Come in, Troy. We've had a lot of excitement going on with this whole eclipse. Something else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I know you shared, and people can go on YouTube or they can go to On Demand, we mentioned, and, and see where you actually talked about that um, mm -hmm. here at Daystar. That went viral. Like over a million people yeah, have yeah. already mm -hmm. looked at that. I so that. Yeah. I kind of want to, um, I know you're going to talk about repentance and it'll all tie in together, but I kind of want to go like, the eclipse has happened, and what do you feel like the Lord showed you after it happened, and what are we looking for, you know, post-eclipse? Wow. Well, you know, first of all, you know, the Bible says that whenever God Almighty spoke, that some just said it thundered. Some only heard a natural event, but there were other people that they heard the voice within the thunder. Mm. And that's yeah. exactly what was going on whenever this eclipse was going on. Some people are like, man, dude, it's just a shadow. Well, number one, it's a big deal to be overshadowed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a really wow. big deal. And, you know, Brother Peter went around, walked around, and when his shadow would touch people, they would get healed. That's your Bible, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the voice within the thunder on this incredible event that we could not ignore, we could not deny, is a voice that declares a word of a, a word of repentance. Specifically, I believe the sign of Jonah the prophet. And so this happened with Jonah. It sure did. When he went to Nineveh, and this was one of the signs yes. that turned the hearts of the people, right? That's right. You know, we don't typically know that because we know the sign of Jonah to be that of the resurrection. But that is through our Christian lens that King Jesus gave us. Before yeah. that, they knew the sign of Jonah the prophet to be the sun went dark. Right. And we just think because Jonah got spit up by the big fish that he was <laughs> really good at re preaching, and I'm sure he was. Well, he was sure bleached white and motivated. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was a rude dude in a crude mood. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. was not in a good mood when he showed up mm -hmm. there. But you can actually, history actually records when he came in because the great Assyrian eclipse happened about 736 years before Jesus. And you could actually look at it, and it's June 15th. So we actually know the day that he went mm -hmm. into Nineveh. And we have to understand the reason why Jonah really wanted God to destroy Nineveh is because okay. of what they had done to the Jews. Is that right? We don't understand so some of the right. history of that. Yeah. Okay, so 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 can I show you some of that? Mm -hmm. Because I also brought some pictures of that. So if you go to the British Museum in big time London, England, if y'all go there and you're like, right on, I'm here at the British Museum. When you're there, one of the, the one of the biggest exhibits that they have is Sennacherib's Palace which it was, mm -hmm. was downtown Nineveh, and it was the palace. And it's actually the same exact pictographs that um, aligned the walls there are the same exact ones that Jonah was looking at. This is an Assyrian beheading a Jewish person. Let me show wow. you another one. Yeah, this, wow. is why, this is why he was standing there. These are Israelites being hauled off as slaves. That's what it that is. It looks like, is that like children being thrown it is. to the side? You got it. That's wow. exactly what that is. So they were this, killing the children. I want you wow. to look at this. That is Jews being skinned alive. Oh, my God. Okay, that is literally the room that Jonah was standing in bringing a word. Mm -hmm. And these were the pictures that were happening around Then there was him. another one, I guess, of them hanging Jews that's, as well. That's right. So all of this is history that shows... Yes. What? And that, that spirit's Assyrians? still alive. Yeah, so, still alive. so Hezekiah had to deal with this, and Sennacherib came into Israel and destroyed 29 cities. And he sat on his throne, and he watched the rape and the slaughter. It was October 7th over and over and over again. Mm. Then what uh, God Almighty stopped him whenever he came after Jerusalem, and one angel killed 185,000 of them, too, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's the same guy. So then he went back, and uh, he didn't want the fame of his shame to be known, so he put all these trophies of how he had slaughtered the Jewish people. And that was what Jonah had to go walking into. Wow. And so the day that the city repented, I mean, you think about that was really a miracle. It was a big deal. Compared to what they were doing and who they were worshiping and what kind of stuff was going on in Nineveh. And then a Jew exactly. brought the repentance. Yes, sir. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that is 
a far stretch. They would never hear that coming. That's, that's right. exactly right. You know, that going back in, in and of itself. That's, that's a right. big, it's really a big word. Going all the way back to the very beginning of Nineveh, it was founded by Nimrod. Mm -hmm. So it's always had this Nephilim, God Babylon. King thing mm -hmm. going on, and it always requires uh, the sacrifice of children. It's always about the enslavement of other people. And yet God had the audacity to tell Jonah to go there and to preach a word of repentance. Yeah. So on the day that he actually went in there, which God, you know, the Lord sent a great fish. And that's very interesting because the word Nineveh means fish city. It means the city of the big fish. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible says that God had prepared a great fish, it wasn't just a great fish that was in the ocean. It was also this city that the Lord had prepared for him. Amen. And what was there in the sky to signify mm -hmm. a great fish? Wasn't there a sign in the heaven? There was. And there was also a great sign in the heavens this last week. The eclipse that came actually happened in Pisces, and directly below that is the, the one sign, that the only out of all the 88, that is a giant well or a sea monster. I think we have a picture of that, too. Don't we? So this is really amazing. Yeah, there it is. Look at so that. Cetus the well is actually, this is where the sign of Jonah was last week. Okay, this was actually going on in the heavens. Mm. And by the way, if you and I will be faithful to preach repentance, and pastors, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, to you and I, if we'll be faithful to preach repentance, the Lord, you know, the reason why God's having to do this in the heavens is because we haven't been faithful. Amen. And we have to be faithful to be able to preach this. Well, there's a lot of churches that don't even do altar calls for people That's to be right. saved. And we've been in several churches, mm -hmm. and we're amiss that they'll talk about Jesus, but they'll talk about the principles, but they won't present and say, today you can get saved. Right on. You know, and if, and if you're going to a we, church like that, encourage your pastor amen. that you want to see people saved. Or they'll say, you know, you can come down for prayer, but they never, like, they you They never ask you to, to accept Christ. Thousands of people there. And take 30 seconds to say, if you don't know Jesus, that's the most important decision you can make today. That's the most important that's decision it. you can make today. Amen. Those of you Amen. that are watching. Amen. Amen. Well, if that is you, okay, we're not going to wait, okay? And it is about knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the, the things in Israel, things around the world are crazy. Things in your life might be crazy. Relationships, breakups, finances, issues. Maybe you're running your own ship. Like Jonah was running his own ship. Well, you don't need to go into a big fish for a few days. All you need to do is say this prayer and say, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. sins. I make you Lord of my life today, right now. I make, I make you Lord, Lord of my, my life, life today, today right, right now. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with Fill your, your Holy spirit. spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Now, if you said that prayer from your heart, you've done what we're talking about. You've repented. And that number, 1-800-329-0029, is a lifelong because we want to give you a couple things right away. We want to give you this amazing Gospel of John, which is no ordinary Gospel of John. It has a QR code in it. And Dr. Gene Getz shares what you read so you understand it. And then we also got the book, Now What? So you can walk out your faith and find a local church and really begin to grow in the spirit. Every one of us sitting on this uh, platform has been touched by Jesus Christ and he has literally changed my life. I was, you know, conceived in adultery, uh, sexually abused, abandoned, alcohol, drug addict. There is no excuse you have that I have or most likely have had. Jesus loves you with all his heart. Come home. And if you've run away, you know right now to come home. So just recommit to Jesus. Say, I'm coming home, Jesus, and he'll hear your heart. And if you prayed that prayer, go to the phone right now and testify of it. So you know, I may not understand what all you are talking about. I just happened across this, star, started watching, but I want to be ready when I die to meet the Lord. That's what this prayer prepares you for, eternity. And um, and also gives you the assurance that you don't have to walk alone in this world. Amen. God has purpose and destiny for you. So call us and say, I prayed that prayer. We don't want any information from you, but we do want to send you that free book of the Gospel of John. Again, Dr. Getz did a whole Bible of this, and he actually goes through every chapter in the book of John with that QR code, and you can a video comes up, and he teaches you what it says. We think the book of John is the best place to start if you're a new believer. So go to the phone right now and call. And this is why we do what we do, Pastor mm -hmm. Joy, right? This is it. This is it. You know, I'm, I promise you, God Almighty is healing people today. He's setting people free, and it's so real. I mean, we're seeing it mm -hmm. every single week. Go ahead and talk to him. Tell yeah. him. Actually, hey, hey, friend, listen, it's not too late. I promise you it's not. Jesus sees you. He loves you. He's real. 
And he is, all you have to do is just give your heart to him. All you have to do, listen, he's paid the price for everything and he's healing the sick. He can actually give you supernatural sanity. If you've never had a right mind, he can give you one. The power of the Holy Spirit is real and is being fully demonstrated today. Amen. Amen. Okay, so carry on, Pastor Choi, with all those things you want to share with us, just we're turning you loose. Okay, well, here we go. You so, guys ready to do this? Yeah, we were in the story where, where God was sending Jonah into his boss or, or some. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like we got a witness too, but he yes. was sent into really like Hitler. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right. I mean, that was. wasn't a small thing, so go ahead. So it was Sennacherib's house, so I think this is like two or three generations after Sennacherib. But, I mean, this was his house. This mm -hmm. were the pictographs. And, I mean, their entire empire was built upon, look at how we have slaughtered the Jews. So he shows up and he goes in there. Now, he picks up his old prophetic finger and points it directly at him and says, you got 40 days. The clock is ticking. Now, what was going on inside was very dramatic, but what was going on outside was just as dramatic because the sun went dark. So it's like, wow. Now, so that means that whenever the sign of Jonah actually shows up, it means a clock is ticking. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. And it was, well, I we don't know about that, Pastor Troy. Well, it's sure real for Israel. Whenever Jesus declared, there will be no additional sign given unto you except for that of Jonah the prophet. Mm -hmm. And then they saw the sky go dark. And then 40 years later, 70 AD, the Romans came in and sacked Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. When the clock is ticking, the clock is, is ticking. Yeah. And that was another 40 that was attached to that. And that one happened to be 40 years. Mm -hmm. But the one back in... Uh, in uh, Jonah's day was actually 40 days. So 40 days from Elul the first is judgment day. 40 days, it's mm. Yom Kippur. And that was, you know, the great American, the great Assyrian eclipse happened on the first of Elul. Now let's just go way off into the future, which is a little bit recently, last week. The second great American eclipse took place here. It happened on April the 8th two or three days after there was a 4.8 earthquake in New York City, mm -hmm. okay, 4.8. So this happened on 4.8, right? Mm -hmm. God on my like, the heavens are being shaken and the earth is being shaken. And according to Joel chapter three, that is the voice of God. When the earth is shaken and whenever the, uh, and whenever the heavens are shaken, it's because God is indeed speaking. So this thing enters in at Eagle Pass, Texas. It exits, it exits out in Maine. And y'all, it goes over seven different cities called Nineveh. Now, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of criticism saying, no, it doesn't actually in totality. That's absolutely true because there's several of them. There's actually one that is only 85%. Dude, if you, if you, on, were, if you were taking a test and you made I'll an 85, 85 on it, would yeah. that be a pass or not? Here's what's real is people are demanding an additional sign. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly who Jesus was talking to. He says, there'll be no additional sign given to you except for that of Jonah the prophet. So it goes over Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. So what happened in America? In, these in are America. cities called Nineveh. Yes. In America, just to be clear with our audience, it, it went by Nineveh. This state, this state. That's right. exactly right. Okay. Nineveh, Texas, after going over Jonah, Texas. Okay. <laughs> Imagine the precision that when God created the universe, no telling how long ago, mm. that when He did, He knew where those cities would be in this day, so that the shadow would go exactly across it. That's amazing. That's a word for this day. Amen. That's incredible. On the fourth day of Genesis 1:14, God created the heavens and the earth, and or, I'm sorry, the sun and the moon and stars, and then it says He created them for signs, seasons, days, and years. Can you imagine the precision of that? Mm -hmm. That that shadow would go across seven cities called Nineveh. Well, if we understand that this is the sign of Jonah the prophet, then we understand that the clock is ticking. Now, I don't know if this is 40 days, 40 hours, if it's 40 years, but let me tell you what 40 days is after this great American eclipse. It is May the 18th. I kid you not. If you look up May the 18th and go, hey, what is it? The first thing that comes up is this. It's National Astronomy Day. Mm. It's like, okay, pay attention to the signs in the mm. heavens. What begins at sundown on May the 18th? Pentecost. Oh, wow. So I think that what we're looking at is it can be one way or the other. What about mm -hmm. the Hebrew calendar? On the Hebrew calendar. Friends, we are, the day of that is the first of Nisan. We just had the first of Nisan, which, of course, is the religious new year. And then from there, which is also, of course, the month of Passover. This is God's plan for us. Mm -hmm. this, that's the plan for America, is for him to pass over this thing, just like the shadow Passovers. Mm -hmm. But friends, I want to tell you, it does not come without repentance. There's no such thing as a great move of God without a great move of God being repentance. There's no such thing as a great revival without repentance. It's kind of a dirty word today. But some of us, you know, we think, you know, Troy, 
most of the people watching are, are saved, and so they think, okay, well, I've already done that. Right. But have you repented of right. not witnessing the people? Yep. Have you repented of letting people go to hell? Have you repented of not speaking your voice, not getting involved in your community? Have you repent? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, we have a different level of repentance because we live in abundance. Right. Okay? And those of us who, who have the blood over our head, we got Jesus. Then he does the inner work of what we need to repent of, yes. the heart work of repentance. Right. And that's what the church needs to do. Yes, the, the non-believers need it's to repent, a come to God. The believers need to obey God. Mm. And do the Great Commission. Do the First Commission. Go out and tell people about me. And it's not just for you, Pastor, mm. to get up and do that. Right? No, no, it's no. For, mm. It's for the sheep. That's right. To win the sheep. And, you know, like you said, have you repented of not doing what God asked you to do? Mm. Have you repented of not surrendering your whole life to God in this time? You know, people That's are right. saved, but they're doing their own thing. But there are, there are people that have not fully surrendered their heart and their mind to Christ in a way that God can do what he wants to do through them. The, the way that we surrender at salvation is one way, but attached to that is the ongoing work of mm. repentance so mm -hmm. that we can go deeper and deeper and deeper in Christ and so that heaven can actually invade our earth more and more and more. Amen. And if we refuse to repent, if we do, then the wicked king wins mm -hmm. as opposed to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So this is a lifestyle. This is this is not something we just do as an eight-year-old at, at, at kids' camp. We don't, we this don't, is something we, don't, we, we don't walk preach in. preach lifestyle repentance. Jesus did. Yes, he did. Forgive me my sins every day. Like, you know, how do you pray? Yep. Ask for forgiveness. That's right. Right, so if you're asking for forgiveness, you're repenting. But we yes. don't really preach that Christianity is a lifestyle of repentance. Right. We oftentimes, well, you repented one time, you got saved, thank you, Jesus. But after that, I mean, I, I repent almost regularly. I mean, yeah. I, we, several times a week, I'm repenting, okay? It's I go to the Lord and I ask the Lord, is there something I need to repent of? Because he knows more than I do sometimes. Because mm -hmm. sometimes like, ah, it was okay to do that, uh -huh. right? You know, they deserve, no, 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 no. It wasn't okay. Right. And in that lifestyle of repentance, then we see, we see revival. And then the community that we live in, if they're all doing that, sees revival, and the nation can do that. Okay, so, it, so 40 days. Continue on with, with what you feel like the rest okay. of the story is. Well, anytime that you see 40 in the Bible, you see like a time of testing, right? So, so you know, Jesus was tempted, mm -hmm. you know, for 40, and we go through the 40 years in the wilderness, those kinds of things of this. And it means you got to pass the test because the clock is ticking. Amen. That's actually what it means. There's a lot of people that think that somebody else is on trial when actually they're in the situation and they're the ones that are on trial. Mm -hmm. right, it's like at the, at the judgment of King Jesus, he wasn't the one on trial. Pontius Pilate was on trial. Yeah. The people outside were on trial. And man, you better pass that test. So the people that are like pointing their finger, mm. they've got four others <laughs> yes, that are pointing back at them because yes, God wants us to search our own heart yes, he does. and quit judging others around us. And the church is really bad about that. Yeah, no, we are bad. I mean, we form our own cliques. You know, we actually get religious about not being religious. Mm -hmm. We're crazy people. We're all desperate in need of a savior, right? Amen. But Jesus is here. Yeah. He's Jesus. here for us. So returning to the Lord over and over and over again and finding new ways to die daily mm -hmm. is actually the lifestyle of repentance. Amen. And so every single time that there is an, a true act of repentance, there is an exchange that takes place. And if there's not that exchange, then there's not actually repentance. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of heaven is like a man that finds a treasure hidden in a field, and for the joy thereof, he goes and he, he sells all that he has. He sells out and he buys the field, mm -hmm. right? So you have to, you have to, you, you, we are taught to sell out over and over and over and over and over again. And here's the deal: it, that that actually looks different in every every season, yes. every yes. day, from person to person. There's 153 people that King Jesus led into the kingdom. That same number. The, the, of the fish in the nets. If you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's 153 of those ending at the thief on the cross. But how he brought them into the kingdom was completely different because how they laid down their life mm. was different, right? So what that means is there's sometimes in your own life, man, uh, God Almighty will show up and he'll say, you know that thing I've never talked to you about? I'm going to talk to you about it Come now. Come on. Like a real dad would. It's just like a real dad because like you're, he is. You're old enough for this conversation. That's right. So now we have to give something up again, mm -hmm. but then we receive new life over and Amen. over and over again. That's what actually determines if he's king of our life yes. or not. That's good. So what do you see happening within this 40 days as far as in your spirit 
do you feel like I know I know there are pockets mm. of revival taking place around the world. Right. Think about Iran, what's going on in the yes. underground church right there. Yes. In China, the underground church like is flourishing. People are dramatically being saved. You think about the persecution that they're under and how we live here. Mm -hmm. Like you said, mm -hmm. so blessed, so spoiled. That's got to change, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. You know, there's no way that you, nobody comfortably changes. The whole process of change is actually very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit who is our comforter, right? And then the Bible also says in that very same verse that Jesus calls him the comforter, he says this, he will cause, he will, he will, he will bring what I have taught you to remembrance. And that doesn't just mean to, rec to recollect. It also means to know what to prioritize Amen. in the midst of changing times. Amen. And that's true supernatural sanity. And if we're not willing to change like that, uh, I, you, I just don't think we're going to make it. Okay, talk about these other graphics you brought, the churches without stars. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I was talking about the actual alignment of that when I was preaching this recently at Open Door. There was this, like, well, could it be that this thing would actually fall on seven cities called Nineveh, seven years after falling upon seven cities called Salem? Um, like, is, how, how is that even possible? Actually, whenever the Lord created all things, he, put, he placed all the heavens with our perspective in mind. And that's, that, the word for that is firmament. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, okay, so he cares about my perspective? Of course he does. He's a good dad. You know, why wouldn't he? So when I was trying to illustrate this point, if we look at the seven cities of Asia, like my good friend Joseph Z and Alan mm -hmm. Dio and, and Rick Renner and all those guys are all over there right now. Mm -hmm. They didn't invite me, by the way. I thought I'd throw mm -hmm. that out there. Well, you so, had to be here. So <laughs> I did have God to be here. God had an appointment for you. So they're, you're they're, to they're, be they're here. only talking to a few Troy. people. Yeah, yeah. You're talking to the whole world. Paul Mayer says, my people. audience is bigger than yours. Right? <laughs> you go. So right on. So they have this. He, there's seven cities that make up the set, the early church. The seven. It's actually the one epistle of Jesus himself in the book of Revelation. Right, his own letter to the seven to the seven churches. But he calls them the seven stars. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, yes. "I'm the one that holds the seven stars within my hand." And then there is actually a constellation in the heavens that the Romans and the Greeks called the Seven Sisters. We call it Pleiades. And I want to show you this one. Let's see if I can see it there. Yeah, look at that. And then wow. if you place it over the seven cities, boom. Wow. That's the seven churches in Revelation. Yeah. And it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, did they actually, did some, what's real is when Jesus designed the heavens, he did so with all the history in mind Amen. so that there would be a word from year to year to year. You know, Amen. I know Marilyn Hickey taught me that like Job and the wise men and others, they actually, mm -hmm. that's how they were able to know what God was that's saying right. by looking at the stars. That's right. It was the Bible. Yeah. Before the Bible was written in the book, it was actually written in the heavens because the author is the same. Pastor Brewer, you know, we saw a roll in at the beginning of the, of the show and talk, and saw people getting baptized. Tell us about what happened recently at your church there. So we had like this eclipse experience, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, guys, let's just get together and let's, let's, just, let's just love on each other as family. Listen, we're going to blow shofars. Uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to make declarations and then we're going to baptize. We ended up baptizing over 300 people. Wow. Actually awesome. during in the Burleson, Texas. In Burleson, Texas. Yeah, yeah. We did. That's not Dallas. That's Burleson. You know, and I'll tell you guys, there were, it was amazing. Whole families Amen. got baptized. You know, God. The mama, the daddy, the kids, everybody. And there was also too, look at that moment wherever it went dark. We were all shouting, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you are our God. We're your people. Amen. We're not afraid, Lord. We yes, stand amen. with you. We stand before amen. you. And it was just, it was radical. Amen. It was like, it, it was really radical. It's one of the funnest things I think I've ever been a part Praise of. Praise God. We, Aren't you excited to see that um, God's love is so far reaching? It is. And that people that are, that don't know the Lord, that are living whatever lifestyle they please. Oh, yes. That the Spirit of God is drawing them. Yes. And, and we're embracing everyone and giving them an opportunity to pray, to be baptized, and for yes. God to do a transformation in their life. We had, Joni, Ladybug, we had, we had witches 
that showed up for that event and went, wow, we need to get saved like Praise right God. now. Amen. And actually denounced their witchcraft. Wow, that's amazing. And we also had people live in alternative lifestyles. And uh, I mean, they showed up. I think they actually showed up to cause some trouble, mm -hmm. actually. And we loved them into the kingdom Amen. is what we did. Amen. And this this one lady asked me, and she, she said, will Jesus save a, and you've just fill in the blank, mm -hmm. right? And I said, will you lay down your life? Will you lay down your life for Jesus? And the girl behind her said, I will. And she started crying. Praise and Jesus. right Revival there, right there. those girls got saved. Oh, right there, amazing. they literally went straight, straight mm -hmm. there to get baptized. There was a man who just got out of prison who I guarantee you he was part of the Aryan nation or something because he had swastika <laughs> tattoos <laughs> all over him, uh, just crazy stuff. He literally ripped off his shirt and said, I repent, I repent, and oh, jumped praise into God. the water. Praise God. I mean, we saw that happen over and over Amen. and over again. Amen. That's exciting. That gives you hope. Oh, listen, not it's just, happening. Not just hope for uh, those happening. people. It doesn't matter what lifestyle you're living. Jesus wants you. And I find, like, in, in my situation, I was immoral, drug addicted, crazy, that oftentimes there's a calling on your life mm -hmm. that God has and the enemy can see, so he tries to stop you with everything so that you don't reach your destiny to heal and set the captives free across the globe. And so if you're that person and you're stuck in some kind of thing and you're too bad, you're not too bad for God. No, you're not. That's your testimony. Your test is whether you will give it to Jesus and make it his story instead of yours. Amen. That's a good point. That is for somebody right now. Just call 1-800-329-0029. Say, I'm the mess. And come to the kingdom right now. He I'm the mess. You so much. Give me you a know? message. And uh, he, I'm a he mess. will. It'll take a while for him to process that out of you. It took him a while to get out of me. But uh, what's your hope for? Well, and he has a testimony like that. I do. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, no. people think Pastor Choi's never done anything. He's just a good guy. Oh, listen, I did nothing. Listen, I've, I've been, I've been planning on being a Bible salesman my entire life. No, man, I grew up playing <laughs> bands. I mean, I went out where all the dogs bark. I mean, mm -hmm. we did all that. And I did that for a long time. Well, I got radically saved. Yeah, and, I, and again, I'm not ashamed of any of those things that I did. I'm not proud of those things, mm. but I'm not ashamed of it because I'm redeemed. Amen. Amen. And yeah, I mean, I want to tell you, if there was a fight, I wanted to get in it. I didn't care if I won or lost. Yeah. I had, you know, we did the thing. You did know, you we, have long hair back then? I did. I did have <laughs> long hair. And it was cool, too. I <laughs> promise you. <laughs> so now, you know what, when I, when, when I got saved, I didn't think I was, I instantly, as soon as I knew Jesus, I knew I wasn't too bad to be saved. Amen. And it's the first time I'd ever thought like that in my entire life. Mm. Praise yeah. God. So our hope, I know we just have just a few minutes here. And Go ahead, Miss Minister. Man, yeah. friends, I want to just, just say that if you're like, okay, did you say that God wants America to repent? That can never happen. Listen, it happened to Nineveh. And if it can happen to Nineveh, it can happen to America. And what I want to tell you is this. How can we hope for the White House to repent if we as the people of God cannot repent? The actual order that it happens in the book of Noah is, I'm sorry, the book of Jonah, is it starts off with the people repented, then the king repented, and then, are you ready for this? Jonah had to repent. Mm -hmm. And it's like he had to come back around to the man of God and says, well, Jonah, are you doing well with this whole mad thing? And he says, I do, I'm doing great, God. I'm about to die. I mean, he was hard-headed. And then God began to talk him through this thing. I have decided that whatever the problem is, it's not going to be me. As for me and my house... I'm going to serve the Lord. America can count on me. My family can count on me. My church can count on me. I'm going to step up to the plate. You do the same, and let's see what the residual effect of that is. I don't know how long this nation has had or this, this nation has left. I do know this, that there's a covenant with God and this nation, and I know that God is a covenant God. Friends, learn repentance. Learn the fear of the Lord. Let there be a great exchange and sell out over and over and over again and demonstrate that in ways to where, to where people look at you and they say, I need to know Jesus the way that you know Jesus. Friends, so that good. is the hope. I want you to just take like about a minute and talk about unforgiveness because there's some of you watching mm. and you're like, oh, I don't have any unforgiveness. <laughs> but yet when you see that person, that situation, you get that angst mm -hmm. in your spirit. That's how you know you do have unforgiveness, and God cannot do what he wants to do in your life until you repent of that. Talk about that. You know, unforgiveness is a really big deal, Joni, and the reason why it is a big deal, because God Almighty has forgiven us. Yeah. And it actually demonstrates the fact that we are forgiven people because we forgive other people. But it's certainly not easy. This change in repentance is not easy. In fact, it's very uncomfortable. 
Friends, I want to talk to you and, and say this about unforgiveness. Hear me say this. If, if you feel like anybody owes you anything, they have, you have not yet forgiven them. When I have completely forgiven somebody, it's when I come to the determination of no matter how much I've had invested in this, no matter how much I was ripped off, no matter what they did to me, here's what's real is, Lord, I give it up and they don't owe me anything. Wow, that's good. Amen. Yeah, I love that. Amen. Well, there's so, so many of you who, you know, we all have life going on, but you don't have to be alone. Day starts here for you not to be alone. That's 24 7. Maybe there's some things you're thinking about you might want to think about a little longer. That's okay. But put this number 1 800 329 0029 inside your cell phone. So and just put prayer. So that when you need somebody, you know that we're there. Well, Pastor Troy, many people have uh, called and, uh, and want prayer. So if you would just put your hand on this and just pray us out, we'll just uh, go out with that. Father, in the name of King Jesus, I want to lift up every single person, God, that has called in, every single person, God, that's crying out to you. I know, Lord Jesus, that when we seek you, we find you. Now, Father, open up the windows of heaven, Lord God, and pour out your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for salvations, for signs, and for wonders, Lord God. God, thank you, Lord, for releasing your angels for the performance of your word in Jesus' name. Amen.